obstruct your ascent. They also can help to stabilize you. The conditioning comes to you from the matter with which we are dealing every day. When a human being sees a matter, he aggresses it and he wants to use that matter for his own purpose. He changes the forms of the matter for his own purpose. He starts getting used to matter as comfort or as a help or a guide in life. The more you start depending on matter, the more your spontaneity is finished because you are dealing with the dead. Matter, when it is dead, then only we deal with it. When it is living, we are not so much bothered about it. So the deadness of that matter settles within us when we start using that matter for our purpose. But how are we to otherwise ex exist is the question people can ask if God has given us these material things and this matter to be used. Are we not supposed to use them? And are we not supposed to enjoy them? But we don't enjoy really. Before realization you cannot enjoy any matter can only form a habit and may become a slave of that matter before realization. It's a principle of, fundamental principle of economics that wants in general are never satiated. Means today you want to buy something like a carpet, all right, bought it. So now that carpet becomes a headache because it's your possession, you have to look after it. You have to ensure it, you have to worry about it that it doesn't get spoiled, first of all. And secondly, you really get into another mood of buying something else. Now you have bought the carpet, finished. Then you have to have something else, then you have to have something else, then you have to have something else. So it does not satiate you, it does not give you the joy. Matter can never give you. It's the spirit that gives you joy. And when the ascent takes place, then you become the spirit. Then matter takes another value system within ourselves. The value system of matter is very different. As I'm sure Jason must have told you, that when you get your realization, then you start feeling the cool breeze. In relationship to matter, it's very helpful to be realizable because immediately you know what is good for you and what is bad. For example, you eat something that's not good for you, immediately you lose your vibrations or you become hot. Even looking at it may happen. You want to sit on a chair on which somebody is a very wrong type of a person has sat. Immediately you feel, oh, something wrong in this place. With your vibrations, which is a definite thing and absolute thing. And this conditioning can only be over, these habits can be overcome only if you become the spirit, because spirit is always dominated by the matter. And the spirit has to overcome that domination of the matter. Actually spirit cannot be dominated by it. But what I mean is that it is covered like the sun can be covered with clouds. In the same way all our domination or we can say all our, else, uh, all our enslavement of the matter makes us dominate our spirit in the sense that we cover it, the clouds, we can't see the Spirit, we can't feel the spontaneity 
which is the beauty of the spirit we do not feel in a person so in judging a person what do we judge how that person looks what dress he is wearing how he walks what are his formal ways does he know how to say thank you sorry or not you see all these things impress us very much what sort of a car he has say what sort of a house maybe we may miss we may miss a saint we may miss christ again because he was a carpenter's son how are we to know who is christ is there any way of finding out who is christ many people are now talking christ is going to come is going to come on the television you can put up anyone there as christ how are we going to make it out by his dress or by some sort of a thing they have done most of the paintings of christ and most of his uh, statues that i have seen are nowhere near christ nowhere near christ see they are horrid things i don't know what are they so how will you make it out that this is christ or not or this is some sort of a focus focus fellow or some sort of a person who has come just deliberately to delude us from reality there is no way out to find out what is the truth because we are so much used to material forms that we have for example our idea of art also is in the same way molded we like this kind of art if you ask why because you know this is this kind of a thing harmony or maybe this is more proportioned and all that but how do you know you know because you've read certain books or maybe that you have understood from somebody else that this is art this is beauty i mean you brand something as beauty but is it really if it is beauty it should be spirit because spirit is beauty and beauty is spirit so is it is it beauty how do you make out that this art is beautiful or not for example according to all normal ideas of womanhood i don't think mona lisa is a beautiful woman i mean the way these days you see mosquito like women are regarded as beautiful so how they call mona lisa so beautiful what's in her thousands of people would be able to see that beauty why what is that only vibrations will tell you that it emits vibrations it appeals to your spirit without your knowledge you are not aware of it it appeals to your spirit that's why universally that painting is appreciated but when this conditioning becomes collective any such conditioning becomes collective and you accept this is the form that is beauty this is the form that is reality this is the form that is spontaneity then the confusion starts the confusion starts at that point when it becomes a collective thing. for example i met some people or some gurus when i asked them what makes you think that your guru is truthful what has he given he said because sitting in my chair i just start jumping by myself i don't do it but it happens it's spontaneous and in my presence the way his body was moving was so horrifying anybody would have tremendous compassion and concern for such a person that you can't sit for 5 minutes straight excuse me it wasn't spontaneous it was nervousness yes that's what i'm saying but you must be wrong in what you talk what about everything from where do you come up the road <coughs> that's it better go <coughs> while you are there look at that we go to the pub now <laughs> must try to understand the subtlety you see if you are confirmed with what now supposing somebody start jumping in the thing and he says and she says it's too nerves that means you are not in control of your nerves isn't it no you think so you are not in control you have not control spontaneity is a thing which is not the thing that makes you a slave this is the point i'm trying to bring 
it doesn't it makes you a master spontaneity must make you a master and not a slave of it so you must have come from tm because tm people jump like that at the end of as epileptic people i have cured so many of them i don't know if someone has come from there even the head of their uh academy in scotland who worked this the flying squad academy as i call it <laughs> where people pay 3000 now this gentleman sitting here is one of them who suffered when they suffered then they know what it is and that day we saw somebody with epilepsy of such frequency the poor child he was hardly 26 years of age young man supposed to enjoy his life was going into such trauma you can't imagine and if this is happening to somebody going to a guru you paid for it how can it be anywhere near spirit this is what i'm trying to tell you that spirit gives you spontaneity in which you are the master you are the master of yourself complete master no enslavement of any kind no habits formation coming all habits stop you become so so spontaneous that i don't have to tell you, you just stop out all habits and you become a master of yourself that should happen to you instead of that if you indulge into things which enslave you you may like it for a while because you can't help it. but if you really sit down You will know that it's not the thing that you wanted. You wanted to be the master of yourself. Now here in this map, I'll see shown. We have two powers, left and right powers. The left power is the power that gives us condition. Left side, the subconscious, the collective subconscious, that gives us the condition. Now, if you try to deny all that, then the right side is even worse. It gives us action, but with action. we can become very ego oriented so both ways it can be troubles supposing you say that all right i have no conditioning of anything what's wrong in doing this what's wrong in doing that and if you just move with that idea with that freedom it will be abandonment it may not be free because freedom must have wisdom behind it so both the sides the movements on both the sides are wrong. So what is all right in the center is not to get conditioned by anything and not to be ego oriented. But how to do it is the problem. The problem is how to do it. To be spontaneous is to be absolutely free. Now I would consider these two powers as a, a brake and an accelerator in a car. Now you use both the powers. You use the brake first. You use the accelerator. You try to control these two powers. But first of all, it is difficult to understand how you to use these powers gradually with practice. You use, you know how to drive the car. You become the good driver. After becoming the good driver, still you are not the master. But then you become the master. So today the master within us. within us is the spirit but before realization we are not the master because the master has not come in our conscious mind it is not expressing in our conscious mind mind in the sense that we are not empowered by its powers the spirit exists it has its own powers but we haven't felt those powers within us once we feel the powers of the spirit we are empowered by our own powers which are there the powers are within us these are our own powers we don't have to borrow from anyone ask from anyone they are in ourselves the spirit is within us only thing that spirit has to give light in our in our consciousness it has to come in our consciousness is in simple medical terminology we can see say that the spirit must manifest itself in our central nervous system in our central nervous system so that we should know what we are doing 
not that we start just jumping on the uh, on the chair or some people said oh you you just start doing it is a process it's not correct you are not in conscious mind you are doing it out of a process a process may be coming from outside force is not your force your awareness your understanding your power it is somebody else's because you are not doing it as matter has a power to overpower us in the same way there are some material things i should say which are very dangerous which are this for example now cancer take cancer cancer overpowers is a very serious thing cancer overpowers you you cannot overpower cancer take a very concrete example now how is it caused doctor say this way that way <coughs> we surge yoga can cure cancer definitely 100% it can cure it has cured many surge yogis have cured cancer ha is very simple that you become master of yourself and you master the disease also you master it because the master is within you it has not come in your conscious mind is the only link is left and when that happens yoga takes place union takes place we should now completely keep ourselves limited to self realization about god i'll tell you next time self realization means to bring your spirit into your consciousness now how cancer is caused let's see here what happened it is caused by left sided activity now left sided activities are emotional traumas emotional problems emotional upheavals emotional insecurities any kind of insecurity can take you to the left side little more movement can be these horrible gurus because they hypnotize they put you to the left they put some spirit in you or i don't know what they do but they put you to the left any one of these activities which are not authorized by god taken to you go to the left side because you cannot ascend in the center so either you go to the left or to the right when you overdo these things it's like black magic you have another thing here i've heard uh some sort of a organization had and the fellow you see he used to uh, everything he saw moving in the house uh, he came to surge yoga and uh, his uh, water uh, jug was moving there and this was moving there and he could explain what was happening in his room he was sitting down and he found something moving from here to here it happens what is that what is that doing this kind of a thing which you cannot control again we come to the same something you cannot control so you enter into the realm into the realm where you are controlled and you are not under your control and that realm when you enter in i have always seen all the cancer patients are the ones affected by this most of them they are not aware they do not know how they get into it for a lady supposing say she is suffering from an insecurity about her husband or maybe something or maybe she thinks that her husband may leave her any time she loves him whatever it is such a woman might get a breast cancer because the insecurity is set in in one of the centers there which you can see here the center of the heart center heart is Now if this center goes out of order if a woman feels insecure for anything whatsoever she is capable she is vulnerable to be attacked and she can get into that so we have to understand life in totality and not in one way the total impact of life the total effect of life the total relationship with life must be understood now no doctor knows this will you know when he treats a patient for the say breast cancer will you know that this lady is insecure there's another disease anorexia many girls suffer from it. uh they don't just eat they just give up eating now you do not know why it happens doctors can't cure it nobody can cure it what is the reason the relationship of a girl of a daughter with a father 
say father dies and the daughter doesn't see the father or she in heart she loves her father but she doesn't express it or there's some bad relationship that comes between the father and the daughter you get this trouble anorexia you'll be amazed but it is impossible for doctors to get it. we have some doctors sitting here it is impossible for any medical science to go near because they do not see a human being in its totality it's a very delicate instrument for us the way we are harsh with others the way we sometimes try to trouble others try to make others feel insecure or unfair unjust without our knowledge we really give them a tremendous insecurity and such insecurities can work out incurable diseases of which we are not aware so to understand the totality what should happen to us we should achieve that state where we can see the totality like if i have to see now for example the whole of Brighton what should i do i should go on a plane and see it from that height i can see the whole in the same way in your awareness in your understanding you should rise to that point from where you can see the whole if you cannot see the whole the partial vision or we can say a little that you see can create confusion can create problems and some of them could be of a very very serious nature because as human beings we do not know what are we this is the greatest problem of human beings that they say i don't like it now which one is this i is that your spirit or is that your ego what is the part that is not like you or is it your conditioning because you are brought up in a particular way so you don't like this which part of you is not liking it and you will be amazed that it is not your spirit because if spirit likes how will you know it's only through your vibrations when you can feel the vibrations then only you will say yes my spirit likes it because the vibrations are emitted so we are still in a transition state as human beings we have not achieved that state which is called as the state of self realization where you become the spirit the becoming is the point when you become the spirit you know what you like you really know what you really like because you are now the reality you are not any conditioning you are no more in ego but you are what you are really and that is your spirit and surprisingly this spirit is a collective being is no artificial collectivity in us that also all right we belong to all bright and so we are one or we belong to one uh, street so we are one it's not like that but it's something that you are absolutely you are a collective being and you start feeling that collectivity within you with these different centers working it out and you can feel it others you can feel others on your fingertips can you believe in the bible it's written that your hands will speak the description of these days is that your hands will speak why not people go and find out what does it happen how can your hands speak this is what happens that on your fingertips you start feeling and understanding what is reality what is beauty what is joy what is love this is the left side which we get and ultimately with these left side problems we get physical pains it's very painful to have left side problems it's very very painful the pain cannot be explained no one can understand nobody can cure it you can't tell anyone and people think that you are fussing they give you psychological treatments 
you just don't understand why this pain is within you. And this pain comes to you from left side, the subconscious. So beyond the subconscious is the collective subconscious. And this collective subconscious is the one where whatever is created from the beginning up to today in the creation is within you. And once you go to the subconscious, you just get lost there. You are so overpowered by this power of subconscious that it is beyond you to understand it, beyond you to get out of it and be beyond you to not to succumb to it. And it goes on increasing. Like I ask some people, why did you go on doing it? When you knew that you were not doing it, somebody else was doing it, still why did you continue to do it? They said, Mother, we were under a blanket. It was darkness. We didn't know where we were moving. We were just going on and on and on. And as I told you last time, feeling guilty is the biggest blockade. It's the biggest blockade because once you start feeling guilty, that the center on the left gets blocked and the, it's very difficult. And you don't know why you are feeling guilty. All the time you are feeling guilty, but you don't know why you are feeling guilty, why these ideas are, of guilt are coming to you. That this feeling of guilt keeps you away from joy, from enjoying anything from being spontaneous. Why? And this explains why we sometimes are miserable for nothing. Actually God has not created us to be miserable. He has made us so beautifully, so carefully. He has created us with such love and compassion not to make us feel miserable, not for anything. He doesn't give us any diseases, no problems. But we have done these things to ourselves by going to extremes on the left or the right. As I am today talking about only on the left, I would say that to feel miserable for nothing at all is also wrong, is being unjust to yourself. The people who are left-sided must know that they are the Spirit, that they are that beauty which has to come which has to express itself, that they are not the people who have to suffer all the time and to live like miserable people. They are not. But because they take so much upon themselves, bear so much upon themselves, they become like And to avoid that bearing up, they may take to some other habits. You see, many people take to alcohol also for reason because they can't bear the pangs of life. They can't bear. That's why they take to But once the Spirit is awakened within you, you become so strong. You become so joyous, so spontaneous that all these things drop on. All those things, so-called diseases, so-called habits, just drop on. And you become a new, blooming personality. Now, the basics of having this center within you we can blame God for that. Why did He give us these centers on the left-hand side? What was the need? He should not have given us this left-sided one, so we would have been just in the center to go. But the trouble is, the human beings have to know in their own freedom how to deal with themselves. They have to learn little hard way the wisdom. They have to know by going to extremes we have suffered. They have to realize because if they have to become truly, absolutely free, they have to rise in their wisdom. If they are not wise people, then they cannot enter into the kingdom of God because they will be abandoned people. Say, people who are abandoned, who don't understand any laws and regulations, if you get them in England, we have to put them in jail. In the same way, human beings, who have not got that wisdom within themselves. Through sufferings only one learns, but we should not ask for suffering. When we ask for sufferings, we are asking actually for mistakes to begin with. How will you suffer if you do not commit mistakes? So when we ask for sufferings, we are committing mistakes. So what we should ask for is nothing but our spirit. And if you ask for your spirit, it is your own, 
and you have to get it. It is in your own right that you are going to get it. It's no way that I am obliging you or doing something special for you. It's all there. You are like a light which is just to be enlightened because I am an enlightened light and you become an enlightened light and you can enlighten other lights also. It's very simple. If you become an enlightened light, you can enlighten others. You don't have to bother about anything else there. You become an enlightened light yourself. That's the point. It is all there. It is all your own. You have to just have it. It is as simple as that. There is nothing very complicated as these people make it or anything that these philosophers have put before you. Nothing of the kind. It's very simple. It is within you. It is spontaneous. It is a living process. As in living process you have become human beings, you are going to become super human beings. It's absolutely spontaneous. You can't pay for it. How can you pay? I mean, an absurdity. If it is a living process, how can you pay? How much do you pay to the tree to get, grow up? I mean, in anything living, do we pay anything? How much do we pay our nose to breathe? Can we pay for it? It's absurd, it's ridiculous. Can we pay for it? We cannot. It's a living process. You have to pick up, an egg has to become a chick. Now, how much do you pay to an egg to become a chick? Or how much does an egg pay to the mother for becoming uh, a chick? It's that ridiculous. But we never understand that living things are so spontaneous. We, we never see living things. We live with matter, we, with the dead, not with the living things. If you start watching a tree, you start watching a flower, how it becomes a fruit, you can't even watch because it's done so slowly. You can't even watch a flower becoming a fruit. Suddenly you find all coming up. Like when I came uh, to London from India, I found all the trees were bare, absolutely like dry sticks, absolutely like dry sticks. Within a week, what I find is the green coming up. Within the second week, it was all lush, can't believe it. We never even notice, we take it for granted, it's happening. How does it happen? It's a miraculous thing. If you see it is miraculous, how these flowers, for example, the particular flowers, are only on a particular tree, and others another, are on another tree. How does it happen? Who chooses them? Who puts them in proper shape? Who organizes all that? And this is what one has to realize, and that is the all-pervading power of God that does all the living work. And once you become that spirit, then this power starts flowing. You feel the power through you as Christ was touched and he said some power has gone to someone, like that. You just become a medium of that power flowing. But you are empowered to maneuver it, to manage it, to understand it. You know completely about it, you know how to give it, you know how to work it out, you know how to cure others, cure yourself. You know the complete working of your machinery. Apart from that, you get the powers to overcome all the problems of your own machinery also. It's so fantastic. The whole thing sounds very fantastic because we have never seen this before. But to us it doesn't sound fantastic when we see all these four flowers suddenly turning into fruits. It doesn't sound. But we see human beings turning into fruits. Then it sounds very fantastic, how can that be? It has never happened. Before only one person would get realization and it was such a difficult thing and nobody got it. How is it today? I say it is the blossom time which is being promised, which is being already prophesied. Even a great poet in your country, William Blake, has prophesied. He said, These times will come when men of God will become prophets. And these prophets will have power to make other prophets. I mean, nobody could be more precise than Blake, I tell you. He was so great to say this will happen. And this is what we have to expect when we go to anybody for seeking. Have we become prophets? And what is a prophet? 
Prophet is a person who is a collective being and who knows all about it. Who is the master? We call Prophet a master. And that's what you have to become the master. And that mastery is very simple because it's all built within you. Just it has to be connected. Like uh, anything like a television set is to be connected to the mains. It's all built in, it's there. It just starts working in the same way. You are that. You are that. Just it is to be connected. Whatever may be your caste, community, race, nationality, shapes, heights, anything, whatever it may be, makes no difference because all of you have got this great thing within you, this power of a rebirth. And you are to be born again and you will be born again. Why not today? There is nothing to get angry because people get angry sometimes because they don't like anybody telling them about something which of which they themselves are feeling bad. They don't like it. For example, if there is a drunkard and he drinks too much, he is an alcoholic, he doesn't like it and he feels bad and if somebody tells him even in the most gentlest way that you better give up drinking, he doesn't like it. But what I am saying is not that you should not do it. I said it will happen that it just drops up. I don't say you don't do this or don't do that, but it just happens. And you must first understand what is the problem and how the problem is overcome. That's why I have to talk. Otherwise there is no need to talk about it all. It just works out. It just works out because you are just ready to have it and you just ready. I don't do anything. I am just a catalyst, I should say, that it works out. I hope you will ask me some questions about it first before we go in for any realization. If you have any questions, please ask. You must ask. One thing. When you talk about any guru, I don't want to go into controversies. All right, that's the first thing I tell you. But I will tell you to ask yourself or ask anyone: What has he done for anyone? Has he been able to give you any power or anyone the power? All right. Now I can tell you all these who are here, who are realized souls, who are here. They are just like you to look at. Of course, from face you can make out that they are very relaxed and very happy. But they can cure people, they can give realization to people, they understand everything that is wrong with you and with themselves also. So what has he done to your event? Nothing. Now, his disciples, what have they achieved? You ask them, where is the Kundalini of this person? What is the problem of this lady? Or what is uh, weighing upon her mind? They won't be able to say. If you cannot even make out what's wrong with another person or with yourself, how are you going to help? All such people, what do they do? Let us see. Simple thing is that they can't mess with us. You may feel happy for a while, just like drinking, you know, if you drink, you feel happy. But by drinking, what have you achieved? Have you become master? All of them are like that. You see, and this gentleman is so obviously because he asks for Rolls Royce. What is a Rolls Royce for a prophet? I mean, what does it matter? You see my point? Is, this is so obvious. I mean, this is so logically obvious. First of all, anybody who takes money from you is a parasite. Simple as that. And to ask for Rolls Royce, of all the things, you see, you have got Christ. You can see it from Christ's life. Will you care for your Rolls Royces? To such a person, he's a king, he doesn't bother. Whether he has a Rolls Royce or not, whether he sleeps on the ground or not, it makes no difference. Such a person doesn't care for anything because he is in comfort, he has got his own comfort. He is a man of self respect. Do you think we really ask for anything whatsoever? I mean, it's so obvious. 
for you people it is so obvious but when i talk to some people of this guru the particular one you are telling me they said mother we give him the metal and he gives us the spirit is can there be an exchange can you purchase your spirit use your logic all right god has given us brains to understand logically we can understand can you can you purchase can you purchase the spirit isn't it so simple we can't pay for it my child we cannot if you want to give me a flower all right it's just an expression of your love and that's all but you can't purchase me you can't your love can purchase me all right that's different but you can't purchase me with metal and money okay? what is the rules for us i mean i don't know what are all these crowds and things what are they good for they don't give you job go and ask the people who wear the crowns yes the other day i was with, with a stature putty she was so miserable <laughs> yes she was you know i tried to sort of put her down her vibrations she was very miserable we were just across the table talking to each other and what i was doing was to balance her poor thing she was she's very upset so you must understand you are too simple people you are seekers of ancient times you are not seekers of today you are seekers of ancient times and this time has been promised to you before all and now you have to fight it now you must keep your logic straight for i mean anybody who ask for rose rose i mean this is one of the stark examples i would say cannot be in is a star temple absolutely one of the but there are subtle ones is not so subtle you will get out of it in no time i know all of you but the subtle ones are even worse some of them may not even ask for money may not i don't know of any but there may be some because i heard about someone who doesn't now take money in india he has made money here and now he's gone to india and he doesn't take money from them but the one who has really not taken money one person who i know has been using women who is not interested in money part he's using money who are women you see so this is what it is you must understand his interest is not in your spirit but in your person in your women okay how can holiness be combined with these dirty habits of people that means they themselves are under the control of their desires which are anti god these are all anti god activities <coughs> and you people being so simple hearted i tell you you are so simple hearted if you tell an indian that the guru takes a rose rose is it right they immediately they can answer they know this guy how can nobody will give to him any guru in india gurus have to pay people sometimes first to entice them westernized indians is different but those who are really indian they, they you see they are people live with the mothers and they know what is what you know nobody can be fooled them the very practical people yes my child can you be healed through faith huh can you be healed through faith oh the, the faith is two types with what we call in sanskrit is shraddha is different from what you call as faith in english they use it as blind faith and another as faith all right we can make it like that now the blind faith is this that i have got faith in god and god will heal me this is one faith all right another is a faith which is enlightened where i say you are the spirit when you are connected now if you say that i have faith in god you shouldn't feel hurt when i tell you the truth all right because if it is a blind faith means that you are not yet connected with the power not connected see now supposing i start saying christ 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 
Christ is not in my pocket. I can't even meet a Prime Minister or a Queen without having a protocol or a connection or some sort of a, uh, you see, position or uh, we can say a authority, isn't it? Now when we talk of anyone like that, some people go saying Rama, 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 Krishna, Krishna, you see these are all incarnations and Christ is the Son of God. He is the Son of a King and you just can't meet Him. You can't just call Him. He's not at your beck and call. He's not your servant. All right? Now, to have in faith like that when you are not connected, if you are healed, you are healed by some other agencies, not by Christ. But if you are a realized soul and then you are healed, then it is done by Christ. I'll tell you a difference, a very clear cut difference of healing. We have in England, we had, I don't know now if you have that one, it's an organization called a International Curative Centre of Late Dr. Lang. Now this doctor Lang was dead. I mean he was late. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a curative centre. You see, and this gentleman died. And he possessed a man in uh, Vietnam, a soldier, not his own son, but a soldier. Now this soldier was told by this fellow, I mean they, they are very honest people, being English they are honest and they tell the truth, you see, they don't say that we do it through God or anything. So they, he told that there are many doctors, I hope the doctors from mine, who have died and who were very ambitious, are still wanting to cure people. And he should go back to my son and tell him all the story that I have come in you and my son will believe. So he said, how will you believe me? He said, no, no, I will tell you some secrets which only he and me, both of us, share. So he definitely believe. So this fellow agreed. He was a very healthy fellow. Actually this spirit entered into him when he got into a certain shock. Something he saw shocked him in the war and this spirit entered. And he was carried by that spirit somehow or other to England where he met his son and he told the whole story. And the son had to believe because he knew so many secrets. And they started this curative set. Now how do I come to know of late Mr. Lang is the thing. They cured a lady who was in India. Long time back, it was 1970, I am telling you. And she came to see me and she was all shaking, you know, she like this. I said, what's this? She said, I was sick with a certain disease and I was afraid of an operation and I came to know about this organization, I wrote to them and they wrote to me saying that at this time, on this date, we enter into your body. Openly, I mean they don't say that we are God or anything. We will enter into your body and you feel a little shaking, doesn't matter and you sleep off and we work it out. And she said, I got cured of that disease. But after three years or so, the whole body started shaking and she couldn't bear it anymore and she came to see me. That's how I came to know about Dr. Lang. That he had, this poor lady was tortured for three years. She suffered so much and then she came to see me. So after Mr. Lang entered into her body, Dr. Lang, it was after six years that she came to see me because three years she was all right. After three years it started. And that's how I came to know all the spirits that had entered into her, the doctors and all that. It was a horrible case. Of course she got cured later on, no doubt. Because when you become the spirit, you are in your fort. Nobody can enter into your body. You become something which doesn't get contaminated, doesn't get overpowered. Nobody can dominate. And that's how she got cured. So with faith, if somebody says, oh, you will be healed, you see, and they start shouting and screaming and this and that, and suddenly you might feel, maybe there's a spirit. They replace also sometimes these spirits. It's very surprising. They can replace the spirit from one to another. I've seen such cases also. 
all kinds of things I've seen in spirit. The other day, the only about eight days back, wasn't that, Mari? When this charismatic fellow came in, something like that. Eight days back in France, uh, a gentleman came in, young fellow, must be about twenty-four or so. He got into such a big agitation and he started crying. And a funny type of a thing that I've never seen a spirit entering. Whole body was shaking, and I mean, he fell down. He started crying, weeping. All sorts of things happened, and he said that I went to charismatic movement where I got it, and many get it, and they think Holy Ghost has entered into them. Now just imagine, how can Holy Ghost make you into God? I don't know from where these ideas come in. And uh, poor child, you know, he suffered so much. Now he's all right, but he couldn't believe it that he could be all right because he thought. They, and then they say these are your sins, and you have to get over your sins, and this, uh, this is why you are. It's happening to you. You still have done bad karmas and this and that, but your bad karmas and all those things can be solved when the Kundalini rises. There is a center for this, especially, which is really being adorned by Jesus Christ here. Did you tell them about this center? Didn't quite get that far. All right. So this is the center, and when the Kundalini passes through that, that's why they say, say that you have to pass through it. He gets awakened, and when he gets awakened, all these two pouches you see, they are of ego and super ego. Your conditioning, and all your left-sided problems and right-sided problems are sucked. That's why they said that he died for our sins. He is described in the ancient Indian scriptures as Mahavishnu, but you see, very. The uh, missionaries went to India. They gave a very wrong picture of Christ. Absolutely wrong picture. So they were still expecting Mahavishnu to come in, and this is what it is. He supposed to be according to missionaries, somebody who sort of converts people and all that nonsense. It's not the real thing that he is to be awakened within us. He said that. He said, "I have to be born within you." And that is what it is. When Kundalini rises, she awakens that center within us, and all our conditionings and egos are sucked in. A space is created here in the fontanel bone area to which the Kundalini comes in, and you can feel the cool breeze from your head coming out. That's what it is, and you feel it in your hand. It's not just that you are mad after someone. It's not like that. It's not that way. You see. Nothing of that kind. You become a self-respecting, normal, dignified personality of great spiritual wealth, which you are. All right. So this is what faith is, and what is blind faith is. Yes, my child. It seems very difficult to concept that self-realization. Doesn't involve some personal effort. It's, can it really come to anybody, irrespective of how materialistic they are? Yeah. Am I understanding you? Yes, it appears. On the face of it, very difficult. Uh, and how people are materialistic is also true, no doubt. But spirit is much stronger than the matter. And when it has to express, it completely crashes all that, and it comes. Now we have here. Most of you are English people, I should say, Westernized, very materialistic people. They were, I should say, I mean, living in that world. They may not have been that materialistic because if they are not seekers, they would not come to me. But a new being has been born. If you look at an egg, you feel that what a hard stuff is this. But if it is broken at the right moment, with the right understanding, it becomes a bird. Because the living process is on, only the last breakthrough has to take place. Apparently, it looks difficult, but to me, it is not. Perhaps I know the job. All right. Uh, yes, it looks. Uh, people have said all kinds of things about Kundalini. Also, I must say, some books I have seen, I have all. Uh, 
You see, if you don't know the job, everything. Supposing that somebody doesn't know how to drive a car, you see, and he gets into the car, the way he described it would be horrifying. You would never go to get near a car, isn't it? It's like that. Uh, the one who is not authorized and who does not know the job should not do it. But that's what happens to you, that you become the spirit, you become your own master and you become the master of this art. The master of this art. Yes, my child? I couldn't hear you. Can't you what, what did you say? You mentioned hypnosis earlier, Mother. And what, what? You mentioned hypnosis earlier, and you also said that you regarded yourself as a catalyst. Did you and want to talk about? don't you think that the hypnotists also regard themselves yes, as a catalyst? Yes, very true. Yes, yes, no doubt. As a soul. Yes, yes, that's true, but <laughs> the difference is this, that a hypnotist brings you under his power. He doesn't give you any power or no, no di new dimension to your awareness, you see. There's a tremendous difference between the two. You see, you have got your own power within you. Say for example, all right, your spirit there. Now, I am a catalyst. You see, you can use a spoon for giving a poison or could use it for giving a nectar, all right. So, if you give the nectar, then it's a great thing and if you give the poison, it's horrible. It's like that. Now the hypnotist uses hypnosis. How does he hypnotize? It's the point. What he does is to push you into your subconscious, into your collective subconscious, where he overpowers you. You are under his power. He says, you become like a child, you become like a child. You suck a little bottle, you do it. What's all this? But here you become the spirit in the sense that you become collectively conscious. It's no hypnosis because you yourself can feel it. Now say example, you take ten children who are realized souls. There are some children who are realized souls, even little children. And you take them near a person who is suffering from some trouble, all right? Now you tie up their eyes and ask them, what's the problem of this problem, gentleman? They will raise the same fingers. All of them will raise the same figure saying, this is burning. You see, because the sensation you feel, your burning of numbness or of cool breeze, a new awareness of a vibratory nature is born within you, not with hypnosis. On the contrary, after hypnosis you feel so dead and finished, as if somebody has been riding your horse. It's just the other way now. And you start growing into you and understanding you can cure people, you understand what are the centers that are catching. You understand what are the centers of another person that are catching. In the beginning, sometimes people have confusion, I've seen, that they don't know whether these are my centers or your centers. But we have ways and methods by which you can discriminate. You can see which are your centers catching and which are the centers of the another person catching. You also know how to get them all right. You also know how to give realization to others and to empower them with their own powers. It's just the opposite. But catalyst could be horrifying and catalyst could be just heavenly. Um, is it something that a person can self-realize themselves and through their own efforts entirely? With their own effort? Yeah, or is it necessary Oh, that's, I don't think it's possible, you see, because like a light which is enlightened can only enlighten another light. But what I'm saying that even supposing, like Buddha, you see, he got his realization when he was absolutely tired and he had to have it. Of course, the Holy Ghost did that, he could not have done it on him, but he got the realization there because it was a different circumstance which he had to live. He didn't have to talk about God, he didn't have to talk about the whole thing. Because people were so much uh, engaged in talking of big things like God and about uh, all kind of deities, this, that, there was a big confusion. And somebody was to be realized at that time who would just localize it and say only self-realization, don't talk of God or anything, forget it. That's why he got a realization like that. 
but you cannot get a realization just like that. Only position you can get. You cannot. Somebody who is an enlightened soul, such an enlightened soul doesn't take money from you. Talk money, you see, people don't want to give a realization. 99% those who are really realized. They will throw stones at you, they won't have anything to do because their experiences of human beings are horrifying. If you go and talk to them, they'll tell me, they've told me that wait for twelve years. See, mother, they will all finish you off, they'll kill you, they'll do this. It's very venturesome to deal with human beings because they'll be very egoistical and they will never accept. But if you take like this, like somebody who knows is a hell, isn't it? And realization is not possible. It's not possible to be done by yourself. It's not possible because if a uh, say a candle which is not enlightened wants to get itself enlightened, the light has to be brought. Isn't it? It's so simple as that. But one should not feel bad about it. Actually, say I. I don't know how to drive, somebody drove me down here, I didn't feel bad that she had to drive me down, did I? And I only know one job, I don't know many, many jobs I don't know, I don't know how to operate bank, I don't know how to write a check, I'm hopeless in many things. Uh, I don't know how to open a can maybe, but I know how to open a Kundalini. Alright, so if I know one job, why should you buy? After all, we depend on each other for everything, isn't it? So why not? If I know the job, what's the harm? And you will know too. You will know too. But it cannot be done by yourself. But actually in this, you are not obliged for anything. I just do it because I love it. It just happens. I don't do anyway. I'm just flowing. I don't know how it happens. Just it's flowing. I just love for love's sake. Just we can't believe such a person can exist. But I do really I am like that. Sometimes you might even some of the surgeries do feel that I'm too compassionate and uh, that I should be rather strict with people and things like that. You say, come and tell me some wisdom about it. <laughs> <laughs> you see they think I'm not so practical. But this is the most practical thing. But I know they make mistakes because they don't know they are walking in darkness. If you are walking in darkness, if you bang at something, the only thing that you can do is to have compassion for them because they can't see, they are blind, isn't it? How can you have any anger or temper? And moreover, I would request you not to have any misidentifications with anyone also. You have to get to your spirit. That's the main thing. If you still think of somebody, you see, like the lady, I don't know, somebody might have sent her here. Maybe. I don't know why she got angry. I didn't say anything to hurt her. Maybe she's possessed. I don't know why she had got angry. And she just got up and just walked off saying that you are telling your fucking lies. Why should I tell you lies? I don't have to get anything out of it. But why it happens? Because she's not sensitive. She's not sensitive to divinity. She doesn't understand who's divine. Who's I don't blame her. She hasn't got the sensitivity. It's a cannibal. I've seen surgeries now of different varieties have come to me. Some of them are of such a cannibal they get into realization, they know what it is, they have the pattern just like a diamond, they get it and they get it. That tremendous. There are some who slog behind. Some of them who get realization, but still they go down to all kinds. Doesn't matter. I love all of them. Yes, my child. What's it? Supposing the full realization that we've got that the more bad things so we're not sure it's like supposing we were just really nasty and we gave everybody cancer and we had to something like that. With the ultra realization, 
the side you need. In the process. Huh? So what is he talking about? Well, I'm just saying, um, would the effect of our karma, would it go away, or would we still get it back or saw a realization? What did he say, Nick? He's saying, Mother, if uh, before realization we were such a horrible person that we gave cancer to everybody we met, or something like this. <laughs> um, after realization, um, does the effects of that get taken away, uh, or what happens? Yeah. I know so many things have happened. Uh, we had somebody uh, in Brighton, you remember, uh, he's here now, I think. Uh, was drunk when he came in. He was very angry with me, was to begin with. He said, how can I get rid of this stuff? I can't believe you and all that. And he's all right, perfectly all right. This change is so beautiful, you can't. Is he there? Tell me God bless you. He's so sweet now. The other day he came to see me. I said, look at that. He's so sweet. He was a very sweet man. <laughs> but something had put him up, up made him upset, you see, that he had become a god. It's all right. And the compassion can only make you understand this, that there's a reason for this. He, he is a very sweet person, very sweet person, no doubt. But something had gone wrong with him. It's all right. So this happens, it's true. <laughs> Sahaja Yogi's real life? Some, of course, I must say, go oh, a little bit. Doesn't matter. They'll come. All of them will come. I'm sure. Everyone is made for it. Actually, the Divine is anxious to give you realization. Much more, much more anxious than you are. If there were a thousand people today, I would have given them realization better. But very few people take to reality. You see now that Guru Maharaj Ji, thousands are like mad after him, isn't it? He has given nothing to them, poor thing. But for reality, there are very few. Like the other day, somebody asked me a question Mother, why don't you do it to everyone? I said, Where are they, everyone? They are busy. Where are they? In this Brighton, how many there are? How many are here? All right? That's the problem. It takes time for people to love to love. It's such a beautiful thing. And even they get realized, then they drop off. You see? But oh, I'm all right now, I'm all right. After one year, they'll appear. That's not the way. You have to master this art. Absolutely master it. It is all free. Absolutely free. Now, they are all sitting down here, they can say that. We can talk a bit more about self realization and you know, what's necessary to enhance that. Yes, yes. I will be uh, in my next lecture one by one. Now, I'm talking the left side, the right side, and then the center. And then also, of course, about the spirit, definitely, hundred times. That's what I have to do. But gradually I have to build you up. For I, I will, definitely. You won't believe. I think I've given 500 lectures already in London, at least. <laughs> and it doesn't end. Every time they say, last time I spoke, they said, Mother, it was absolutely a new dimension you talked about. I don't know. Kerry told me first time he touched his vibration so much with my lecture. I the what I touched him. So, yes, it's a problem. He's from Australia. Australians, very well. Very fast work. So, all the questions are over now. Should we have it? What of karma? Huh? Karma. Karmas are when you do any work or anything with your right side action. Then the effects of that accumulate within you as an ego because you think you are doing it. Actually, we don't do anything substantial. What we do is a dead work. Like as I said, we make a chair out of a dead a tree. That's all we do. What work we do is an idea we have. We are being worked. What work are we doing? 
Can you convert this into a fruit? We can't even put fragrance into it. So this myth, see, works as evil in us, as shown here, which I will be speaking tomorrow about, all right? And this is what is that we think we are doing this work, that work, and this ego thinks that if you have done bad work or good work, we have to suffer. You see, a tiger doesn't feel that way. If tiger has to eat, it must kill. It kills the animal, eats it, finished. He doesn't sit down and sulk, oh God, I should not have to I should become vegetarian. He <laughs> doesn't accumulate any, any, uh, any karmas in it, all right? But we human beings do. Why? Because we are closed people. We are closed. See here, we are closed. They are open. Whatever they do, they are not bothered. But we are bothered about what we do because we think we do. And when, as I said, the center is opened out, he sucks our karmas. And the so-called karmas are nothing but sins, you see. In, in a biblical language, you can call it a sin, you see. And they are all sucked by this powerful deity of Christ awakened within us. And you get beyond it because it is the ego that does the karma. When your ego is finished. Where are the karmas? They are finished too. Then you don't say, I did it. What you will say, Mother, it's not working out. It's not going up. Now what is this it? It becomes a third person. It's flowing. The vibration is not coming. You see, you don't say, I, I am doing this realization. I am raising the food. They don't say so. They say, it's not rising. You become a third person. That third person is the spirit. When you do not say that I should do it, even if it's your son, you'll say, Mother, it's better that he gets realization. All right, you see, try it. No, it doesn't work out. All right, then should I give a certificate? He said, How can you give certificate, Mother? How can you that Kundalini have not written? Everyone knows. You see, it's whether it's your father, mother, sister, anyone. If they are not realized, they know they are not realized. So what? They just know. And this granddaughter of mine, who was who's here now, she's a born realized, and she was hardly about five years of age, I think, when they went to Ladakh. And there was one lama sitting with his shaved head and all that way. And everybody was touching his feet. And the parents also not realized, my daughter is not realized, so she also touched his feet. She couldn't bear it anymore now. It was too much for her. So he was sitting in a higher hillock. She went put her hands back and looked at him, see, turned him. He says, what do you mean by asking everybody to touch your feet? You are not even a realized soul. <laughs> by wearing this dress of yours and shaving your head, you think you can ask people to touch your feet? Little child of five years. It does they understand. We had once a program in India when they invited me as the chief guest and <coughs> this Raman Maharshi who was a realized soul. And, uh, one gentleman from Ram Krishna Ashram, the head of that, was sitting with his big uh, uh, orange robe, see, <laughs> sitting there. And my another granddaughter, she was sitting in the front row. She couldn't bear him anymore, so she shouted from there, Mother, the one who is wearing a uh, maxi, their grandmother, please ask him to get out, he's giving heat to all of us. <laughs> there were many sajogis who were feeling the heat for the time. And he thinks he's a very spiritual man. So she just stood up. She said, ask him to go, he's wearing a maxi. She didn't understand it was a robot thing. Even children know who are realized so and who are not. If they are born to realize. There are many children who are born to realize this. The time of judgment. This is the time of judgment. It was about this altar. It's all right, I don't mind. But what happens if you ask too many questions, sometimes it becomes mental activity and may delay the realization sometimes. So I would advise you, if it is not so important, better keep it out. Because you see, answering the question is only on mental level. I am talking something much beyond, you see. So it is something logically, if you have understood me, all right, let's have it. If it will work out, work out. 
will not work out, doesn't matter. I am here for three, four days. And we are going to work it out. Alright? So it is better to keep your mind at rest. Tell the mind, you have asked many questions before, you have thought of many things. Now the time for you to receive the blessings of your own. Alright? If you tell your mind, it will rest. It's a, it's a wonderful thing, mind is. If the mind knows what you want, and if it is the reality, it supports you and helps you very much. The same mind which can go astray. See, it's like uh, sometimes I like a donkey. Like Christ used donkey just to suggest the mind that if you allow it to go astray, it will take you to all kinds of things. But if you control it, Just make him keep quiet. It's better to keep quiet at mind level. And that's why I answered your questions because later on when the Kundalini is rising, at that time the mind should not stand up, isn't it, to say that I haven't asked this question. That's why. Just to soothe it. There's no need, but just to soothe it down, I guess. Alright? So best thing is to get your realization is the best thing. Otherwise this mind is quite a disturbing stuff. It can come at the right time when you are going to achieve your last direct proof, it may stop. Alright? So if you have any immediate question or by which you are really oppressed, then you must ask. But if it is not so important, just give up. Is it very important? So then it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it has realized.